She has lived in and worked in since first moving to New York in 1976. So she's been there for over 40 years. Um, very Spartan, like the rest of her. Um, this is from a few years ago, but it looks pretty much the same now. The artist has often turned to Urdu poetry and literature since the 18th century by Bahadur Shah Zafar, Mirza Ghalib, Muhammad Iqbal, and Fez Ahmad Fez to formulate deep philosophical ruminations about life, time, travel, and the soul. She states, poetry was always a part of our life. In Indian and Islamic tradition, you learn by memorizing things, and the measure of an educated person is determined, determined by how many poems you can recite. In 1998, Zarina fought and won an ugly legal battle for the, right, for the right to continue to live in her studio in Manhattan. The ensuing feeling of vulnerability catalyzed a portfolio of 36 woodcut prints titled Home is a Foreign Place, which is a magnum opus in her oeuvre. Zarina says, I made a list of Urdu words that embodied home for me. Threshold, door, entrance, courtyard. In Pakistan, I had a calligrapher write out each word in Nastalik script. In New York, I developed an image to accompany each word. So the word comes first, then the image. Language ties my work together. Urdu is home. Um, so this is one of the works in Home is a Foreign Place called Despair. And here's the, the Urdu word um, accompanied by its image. And I thought it would be fun for you to see, um, again, the relationships that uh, inspired Zarina, uh, especially her close friendship with Anna Mendiata, who, as many of you know, um, died very young, tragically. She um, either was pushed off or fell off her apartment building in Manhattan. The case is still unknown. Um, and this is a very important performance that she did in the mid 70s called Body Tracks. Um, and Serena says that that's really what she had in mind when she did this particular print called Despair. So I thought it would be quite nice for you to hear the 36 words. Home, threshold, door, entrance, courtyard. Wall, sky, earth, sun, moon, stars, axis, morning, dawn, dew, afternoon, stillness, hot breeze, evening, shadows, clouds, dust storm, rain, fragrance, night, darkness, despair, country, dust, language, journey, road, destination, distance, time, border. Um, another example called destination. And again, just a reminder of Zarina's time in Paris and what she would have seen there, including Brancusi's studio which is now part of the Pompidou Center in Paris. And of course, um, his various renditions um, of the endless column and her own sort of interpretation or reinterpretation of that, of that image. Border. It is interesting to note here that while the portfolio begins with an image of Zarina's childhood home in Aligarh and a gentle invitation to enter its rooms, that it ends with an image of the border, of being locked out, unable to pass through. The woodcut dividing line 
this work from 2001 is an iconic work that sublimates Zarina's internalization of the partition. She recalls when as a 10-year-old child, she and her mother and elder sister Rani were sent to a refugee camp in Delhi for a few months before traveling onwards to Karachi. After attending a local school for a while in Karachi, Zarina made her way back to Aligarh under her father's escort. She says, these memories have stayed with me and formed how I think about a lot of things. Fear, separation, migration, the people you know or think you know, your friends and neighbors. I often think about the refugees that were coming from Pakistan or going to Pakistan. Trains would pull into the station and everyone on board had been killed. Families were split, homes destroyed, the fabric of life for millions of people was permanently altered. All this for a new border, this dividing line. Um, and while I was doing the research for this lecture, I came across this sort of uh, mirror work from 2013 called Abyss. Um, and I think, again, it just starts to show you how Zarina will work with a certain idea or an image or an idiom or a metaphor um, for either various years or various decades or over time. She will always come back to a, an old woodcut or an old idea and find a new way of um, reformulating that, that, that concern or that question or that idea of the border or the line. Um, and here you have Abyss. The early years of the new millennium were a turning point in Zarina's life and practice as she honed her political consciousness through art. After the events of 9-11, Zarina states, Ethnic conflict changed my life. As the years passed, I found myself witnessing conflicts waged against Muslim communities around the world. Her poignant series, These Cities Blotted Into the Wilderness, Adrian Rich after Ghalib, from 2003, includes essentialized maps of Ahmedabad, Baghdad, Beirut, Grozny, Jenin, Kabul, New York, Sarajevo, Srebrenica, I always have a hard time pronouncing that, and sites of modern warfare, terror, and mass civilian death. I think you can see, you know, the mass graves here and her own way of mapping that. Letters from Home from 2004 are based on letters written by Zarina's sister Rani, which were never posted to her in New York. They speak of the death of Zarina's parents, as well as of her eldest sister, Saida. They speak of Rani having to sell her house in Karachi after having lived there for 32 years. They speak of the separation between two beloved sisters and of Zarina's solitary existence in New York. They speak of family libraries and gardens and cherished memories. They speak of erasure and closure. This is a map of um, the hall where her father taught at Aligarh Muslim University with one of Rani's letters. This is about the death of her mother. And this is of her sister thinking of her living alone in New York for 40 years and what that, how that would have impacted her psychologically. This is her trying to erase all of it. The works Noor Divine Light and Blinding Light from 2008 and 2010, as well as Zarina's Tazbis from the same period, 
invite us into a spiritual realm. Using 22 carat gold leaf to create a resplendent surface, these works allude to the notion of home as ultimately residing in the blinding light of the creator. Sorry, the this is an installation view of blinding light at the Guggenheim. Probably the largest format work that Zarina has made in paper. And this is one of her tasbis. The tasbis or prayer beads also necessitate counting and quiet contemplation. Here, repetition takes on transcendental qualities. Zarina also interweaves the notion of home as residing within this very meditation as she carves each bead in the shape of a house. This is the one where every bead is actually a sandalwood house that's been strung together in the form of a tasbih. Made of fragranced sandalwood. In one tasbih, covered with black sumi ink and gold leaf, Zarina also plays with the idea of mapping and of, and of globes as the abstract forms resemble atlases. Sorry, these files are very large. Okay, go back. Okay, that's just one of the tasbis. The ongoing series, The 10,000 Things, Here we go. The ongoing series, The 10,000 Things, which Serena commenced in 2009, which we showed here in this format at the Guggenheim, are inspired by Marcel Duchamp and his Boite en Valise, containing miniature replicas of finished work as well as photographic reproductions. And that's one of the examples of the box in a suitcase. The title is taken from the celebrated Tang Dynasty poet, Sen Shen. When the 10,000 things have been seen in their unity, we return to the beginning and remain where we have always been. Zarina uses old photographs and cuts, recycles, and reassembles old woodcuts to create abstracted, portable vignettes from her life and practice. The series shows her interest in archiving her own work, as well as her love of books since the final size of the folios is the size of a paperback. She says that she, would have, that she would love to see them all published as a book. For Zarina, states art critic Karen Rosenberg, paper is sculpture, poetry, currency, and above all, a kind of permanent home for a nomadic spirit. Taking this nomadism as a point of inspiration and departure, the first iteration of the 10,000 things was shown in this kind of circular format. Um, and each one of these is part of the 10,000 things. Let me just show you some more. Um, this is the second set in the same series from 2011 to 2014. And I think I have some close-ups to show you, yeah. Um, you know, a miniaturized house, shadows on her work table, and a, and a tasbi. The constellation, which goes back to home as a foreign place, as well as the idea of ascending to the blinding light, or noor, done in gold leaf. The sculptural installation, Descending Darkness, from 2014, may be seen as the mirror piece to early works such as Noor, Divine Light, and Blinding Light. Here, Zarina utilizes black marble for the hanging bulbs, which relates to her use of Sumi ink for her works on paper. She says, I've been using Sumi ink to dye my paper. It's a transformative liquid. 
It seeps into every fiber of my paper, swallowing all color with its deep black darkness. Zarina's somber exhibition at Loring Augustine Gallery reflects her state of mind and her thoughts on contemporary civic life. Um, and some installation views from her exhibition. It has never been enough for her to only be seen or reckoned with as an artist. 